In 2020, we made the huge decision to sell our home in the lower 48 and move north to Alaska to live a way of life free from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Join us here as we share our everyday adventures living free in Alaska. Today on Living Free Alaska, with Gary's mom and dad headed back home, it's now time to welcome our next guests to the homestead to help celebrate my upcoming 50th birthday. And for that birthday, Gary gives me the biggest gift of them all. We're getting chickens. So with that exciting news, it's time to build us a new chicken coop on the homestead. So join us today on Living Free Alaska. Good morning. I'm so excited. It's a good day. It is a good day. It's a good day. Our best friends are almost here. They're flying in about an hour or so. Yep. <laughs> and we just got a call that uh, my wedding ring, I had some repairs to it. It's done. Yeah. Perfect nice. timing. Remarried to me again. Okay. Like <laughs> the right ring, not your little band. This there. is my anniversary band. Mm -hmm. I'm missing my wedding band. But we, as we mentioned last night, we stayed in Anchorage last night. We're at the Marriott and beautiful, really nice room, yeah. 16th floor, gorgeous view up the uh, up the, Knick Arm. the Knick Arm, and uh, yeah, I'm. It's been a good night. I'm ready to go to the airport and get big hugs from Jeff and Julie. Oh yeah, we'll see him in just a little while. All right, so. All right. I don't know what kind of trouble we're gonna get into this week, but I'm sure we'll share we'll some of it. Want to turn around? Yeah. We'll All right. That way. Yeah, this is our view. Kind of neat. The port of Anchorage is, I'll get my finger right there, right over there. We're gonna actually do a tour of the facilities for Tote Maritime, which the ship is in today. It's parked right over there. We're gonna do that later this spring, but this is the Knick Arm. And right out here is the Cook Inlet. And this is Port McKenzie. And so. you can see that it's 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 iced over, but it's not solid sheet ice. It's 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 moving. It's, it's, it's tidal ice. There's there's there, the tide's going up the arm right now. It's like the, the whole sheet, uh, sheet of ice is moving up, but it's very soft and, and broken up. So that that tote maritime ship when it leaves tomorrow or today or whenever it leaves, we'll be able to just kind of power right through it. You can see the uh, sleeping lady. Mm -hmm. uh, and Denali is between those two barely, orange buildings. Actually, of, this morning I could see it. It's I can a still see it, over, it, it right in the middle of those two buildings. But, but. the Alaska Range is back <clears> in the. <throat> mm -hmm. And we live like just literally. Well, there's the, Baldy, Baldy right there. So we live just straight up that way. We're about 24 air miles directly north of our position. So. And this is the very north. End of Anchorage. Yeah, downtown. Downtown. Basically. Captain mm -hmm. Cook Hotel, the Hilton's over there, the West Mark. If you're on a Princess Cruise, they usually put you up in there. But right across the street from the uh, Performing brew Arts house. Centers, right there. Yeah, the Brew House Place is brew right, house. right there. So, pretty neat. All right, well, I am ready to go one, get my wedding ring, and two, my best friend. Yeah. It's been a comfortable stay here. Uh, we dropped mom and dad off late last night. We got a good night's rest. Got a late checkout today. So I think, I think we're ready to call it, call it a day and head on out. I will say that. I bet. Moose's Tooth, you gotta go. Whenever you come up here to Anchorage, Moose's Tooth is just amazing food. I mean, the pizza's great. The environment's awesome. Amazing beers. But you have to have patience. But you have to have patience because there's going to be a line. Today it's midweek, winter, midday. So we didn't have much of a line. But you come up here in the summertime, it's going to be busy. But it's worth it. Our week together spent with our best friends, Jeff and Julie, from back home was a wonderful visit. 
The camera didn't come out much as we were just enjoying each other's company. During their stay, we managed to get out and do a few things, such as visiting the town of Talkeetna, and we also attempted another visit back to the Knick Glacier. But this time, Mother Nature wasn't being as kind. So what do you think? Was it worth the drive? Yes. Yeah. 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 A little, little nerve wracking. This is super cool. It's a glacier. Well, it's an iceberg. Well, it's something We're big. not even near the glacier. It's big. This is just a piece of the glacier that fell off into the lake. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. We also took the time to go visit our favorite Santa's helpers at the Williams Reindeer Farm in Butte. It was a treat that they were offering tours during the winter time. So if visiting during the off season, be sure to check their website because tours were limited to only certain days and times. And depending on what was happening on the farm, they may be closed for long periods of time. For example, they're closed in the month of April due to the birthing season. If you would like to see a past video where we visit the reindeer farm in the summertime, click the link above and we will also drop a link in the description below. I do have to make one sad update if you've seen our last video from the reindeer farm. Their bull moose, Rocky, died in the fall of 2022 and the rules have changed at the farm where you can no longer pet or kiss the moose. But on happier news, this past spring in 2023, they welcomed a new baby moose to the farm, Lily. So Miss Lucy will have some company in making their visitors have a wonderful time at the farm. This is all you, baby. What are we doing? Well, first of all, we should apologize. It's been a little bit. It has been, what are we on now, week six? Of what? Guests. Oh, guests. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we, it's, well, I think you guys saw the surprise uh, with my parents coming in for my birthday. And I think that's the last thing I actually have recorded. Right, that, that, was, that, was, that was the start of it all. That was March 4th. And we've had mom and dad for a good week. Uh, my friends, Jeff and Julie. Oh, you saw them too, I believe. Oh, you will see them. Yeah, I think I filmed a little, but barely. Yeah, Jeff and Julie. Uh, cousin Winston was here. For five uh, more days. Yep, and now we got Mama Paula here for almost a month. <laughs> so today is April 10th. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. March 4th to April 10th, what, what, when they come in? Uh, your parents came in March 4th. Yeah. So. so in that time frame, both Gary and I have had our golden birthdays. We both turned 50. I cannot, you know, half a century. 50 is pretty damn awesome. I think she looks amazing. I know she is amazing. So I cannot believe she's 50. Whatever. But I can't believe she's 50. I'm glad she's my wife. I'm, I love her. Thank you so much. There we go. For the video. For the video. I didn't know about that either. I can't sing an auntie. Happy birthday. Just 
She said, oh, well, I got my older lady. I got my old lady with me now. You're still old. I got my old lady. I, he's got me by 27 days. Yeah, so. yeah. But uh, so we had wonderful birthday celebrations. Mm -hmm. um, spring is in well, the air. It, it was here. Spring, it was, spring was here for a while. We had some mid, mid 40s and beautiful summer. We're like on our fifth winter. Yeah, we had three inches of snow this morning. It's over last night and this morning, actually. But now the sun's coming the out. The sun is shining now, but mm -hmm. it's still cold. Considering the calendar says it's April 10th, um, and spring really should be right around the corner. Uh, Gary's birthday present to me is something very exciting for me. Yeah, for you, me. And, and I love the excitement you get from it. So that's what makes me happy. So today we are going to start on the project. And if my shirt doesn't tell you anything, we're getting chickens. So she's been wanting a uh, chicken coop. Uh, well, our whole plan was to build a greenhouse. We we're going to build yes. a greenhouse. That's going to be a, a spring project too. Well, there's still two feet of snow on the ground or more. <laughs> At so some point. When summer snow, project. Yeah, it's a summer, summer project. So greenhouse is always a go. She's been bugging about, oh, but chickens are so fun. Nah, 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 if you look nah. back on uh, our previous videos during quarantine in 2020, uh, Gary helped me. I started. He took over and finished. So then, uh, let's reframe that. Stacy assisted me. Yes, I assisted in building an amazing chicken coop at our last property. We did a great job. And this one's going to be completely different because it is going to be attached to our greenhouse, mm -hmm. we think. But um, since we really can't build the chicken house yet, and it is now chick season. Uh, we've been in all the pet stores mm -hmm. in the greenhouses. They got little peepers everywhere. There's little peeps just chirping <laughs> away. And I have ordered nine baby chicks. You should bump that up to 12 because there's, there, you know, they, there they could be some unfortunates that don't make there it. There could, but I have room in my chicken math to do that. <laughs> Uh, that's a thing, folks. Chicken math. Look it up. I mean, yeah, there's, they talk about it. It's... You start with, you know, nine, and next thing you know, you have 18. So, Gary has agreed today to start on my brooder. Well, I mean, you're going to help a lot. I am. I'm going to be here to guide you through the cutting and assembly of the brooder. Okay. I have a whole bunch of stuff already on the way uh, in from Amazon, mm -hmm. and our chicks arrive on May 2nd. Right. So Is I did three weeks from now or so. I so. gave us some lead time to mm -hmm. get this all ready, and who knows, maybe if we get it done, and I find a couple more chicks. Yeah, probably will. Highly likely. Chicken math, it's a thing. <laughs> all right, so we uh, this brooder is basically built out of one sheet, four by eight of OSB. We're actually using regular plywood. It's a better product than OSB. It will stand up better, yeah. especially with the bedding. Well, it looks better. It does. Yep. And this is going to be something that we are going to use in the future. Mm -hmm. um, like next year, if I want to hatch some more chicks. Oh, you want to hatch chicks? What about, oh, that's a whole different Well, thing. maybe get ba baby, oh, baby well, chicks. I mean, but that's a lot more than 12 then. What? Uh, we'll see. Yeah. And also, okay. the brooder can be used as a quarantine area for an adult chicken if well, it's sick. So. That's true. That, that's kind of nice to have that isolation option. Yes. And, yes. you know, folks, um, as with any crazy chicken lady, more is never enough. No. So, and I think the coop we'll have is going to be a little bit different, quite a bit different than the river house coop. Um, we have to consider temperatures here and, and climate, and it'll be a smaller contained uh, uh, inside coop that is insulated. Not necessarily heated, but insulated. No. We're not uh, going to heat because we don't want uh, increased risk of fires. So no. many people lose their entire crops uh, because of coop fires, mm -hmm. and chickens, believe it or not, can survive in Alaska right. weather without being heated. Just got to keep a good solid structure for them to go into and 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 with the deep compost bedding style that we're going to probably do mm -hmm. that does help raise the ambient temperature and having the birds in there their body heat helps raise the ambient temperature a little bit in that 
in that coop. So in their whole coop area, and in the coop, even the man side of things, where I'm going to have like a bench and where I store the feed, it's going to be completely insulated. So the floor will in be insulated, the walls and the ceiling to help keep in that heat and all they really need is a draft free environment yep. so she's been doing her research a little bit so have i so oh we'll you've been silently researching well i want to make sure your ideas are correct <laughs> they're always correct <laughs> oh. <laughs> good husband. all righty <laughs> let's all go right. build this brooder <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go have some fun The, the chops over here, so we're going to reposition so she can cut out the perimeter for the base. He's really making me do all this. <laughs> Welcome to the garage, folks. The shop, I should say. Uh, springtime's here. This should have been done in the fall, but uh, oil change season right now. I've already got the lower units changed. Everything's good on the lower unit oil, the gear case oil. That's all good. Uh, I'm gonna go and uh, do an oil change in both these uh, Yamaha 300 outboards. Speaking of spring, <laughs> we still have well over two to three feet of snow on the ground but it is melting fast we hit 50 degrees yesterday our warmest day of the year so hopefully in a few weeks this will all go away and things will start to green up While we waited for the snow to melt, we got busy on making our chicken coop. Okay, moment of truth. 12.04, at 12.05, the door should drop. I don't know, I don't have much faith. I had this installed in my old coop down in Washington, and I couldn't get it to work. Oh, it's going down. Yeah, very, very slowly. Wow. Oh, and I have a nail through here. Mm -hmm. Hey, but I built it. Not bad. <laughs> and she built it. 
so it can just set into the framework of the back wall of the coop. So all I gotta do is just pick up, boom, nail, 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 in. And then, uh, what do you call it? Wall it in. Oh yeah, yeah. But that framework is set up to go inside the coop, just like that. We'll put it on the top piece on it. Well, now we'll see if it'll open. I've got to reset the opening. Our original plan of building a chicken coop would be to attach it to a greenhouse went out the window after we decided to place the coop closer to the house. Our next step was somehow to get the floor and walls outside and into its final resting place. my job to yeah, doubt. You do a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, there's step one. As Gary can prove, he got the job done. Our Polaris Ranger was a workhorse getting the building into place. Next up was to raise the walls. As spring progressed, so did the coop. Due to Gary's double carpal tunnel surgery on both wrists at the same time, this build took several more weeks to complete than we anticipated. And before you knew it, spring was finally here. Kind of. It's now June and our flock of 16 fluffy butts, yes, chicken math happened, are quickly outgrowing their brooder. So we rush to finish drying in the chicken cabin so they can stretch their wings and begin living a good chicken life. If you couldn't tell, this chicken coop is good enough to be a true cabin. We ended up using leftover building materials from our house to build this coop with 2x6 lumber. To say our chickens are spoiled is an understatement. Only the best for my little tiny dinosaurs. Now that we are in the final phase of completing the coop, it is moving day. What do you think? Will they like it? Okay, the chicken coop is to a point that we can uh, have the chickens in. We moved them in today. Uh, this building is eight feet by 13 feet inside. I have my brooder set up right here. So this is for babies or quarantine chickens. Over here, this is gonna be our nesting boxes where I can collect eggs from the outside. Uh, right now that they're blocked off so no one gets used to sleeping in there. This is going to be a uh, chicken feeder box. Uh, it's not built out yet. We still have that left to do. Uh, over here we have a door that goes to the outside run that we have not done yet. And then a patio door to go into the coop. And to our left, we've got our chicken door, automatic chicken door. And here's all the ladies. They're getting used to their new home. They got a couple of roosting bars. We'll see if they use it tonight. And uh, from in here, there's their nesting boxes. What do you guys think? A lot better than your four by three box, huh? Yeah. All right. Happy chickens. A couple weeks after finishing the interior of the coop and letting the chickens move in, we finally finished the outdoor run to a point that we felt that they could safely come outside for the first time. Cheeks! 
You want a treat? Oh, you'll come out. You'll come out for a treat. You would think this would be an easy process, but you know, chickens, they have a pretty small brain. She's like, nope, I'm not sure. Come on out. But the patient chicken mama and me, Hi. I waited it out and eventually they took Hi. the bait. I know Gary really didn't want to have chickens, but he knew his wife really, really loved them. And I just have to say thank you, Gary. These chickens have been such a welcome to our homestead. <laughs> Yeah, that is dirt. Welcome to dirt. Happy 11th week birthday. No, it took us a little while. Good lucky. Well, that's it for another Catching Up the Vlog. Only a few more to go until we hit real time 2024. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we will see you next time on Living Free Alaska. Thanks again for watching as we catch up the vlog to real time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post again. And lastly, we hope you'll join us again next time here on Living Free Alaska.